Hello. 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 I'm Joe. I'm Rachel. Um, Lisa CTF happened. I think you guys had fun. And I want to talk about like how that happened. Um, okay. Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Leone. I am a third year CSEC major, minor in criminal justice. I am from New Jersey. Depending on if I'm from Central Jersey is a mystery. Um, <laughs> I am vice president of WESIS. I'm a CSH alum, blue teamer, and adventure. And you can see through all these photos here. Cool. Yeah. I'm Joe. Yeah. I do things. Uh, the idea technically, both the FDS, the CSEC department, BSMS. Uh, from the great place of Long Island, better than New Jersey. Uh, pep band, tennis acts, berry acts. Be at hockey tonight, seven o'clock GPC. Um, CSH, I'm an e board member. I'm Upcom, as they say. Basically, me to admin. I uh, do ham radio, K2 ABZ. Look up my address, go ahead. Um, and a proud bus station. Um, I will die. That bus is the best programming language that ever be created. Um, and I dare you to challenge me on it. Oh, yeah. All right, so yes, the WESA CTF did happen. Uh, my job or my um, position as vice president was to run the WESA CTF. Um, so I'm going to go into a little bit of the administration side of running a CTF and how that looks, how that entails. Um, so first, um, picking your date on when you're going to have your CTF is really important and making sure you plan in advance. So our CTF took place from October 20th to the 22nd, and I started planning for this in July, um, talking with the WESIS eBoard to try to like coordinate everything. Um, Google Forms are your friends. I made a lot of these Google Forms uh, just to make sure that I was keeping people accountable when needed. Um, and just familiarizing yourself with how a CTF works, how it runs, talking with previous either eBoard members or other people who ran a CTF before, just to get a little more insight, like about talking to Contagion and other things like that. Um, so another big important thing that you need to do when running in any event is making sure people know about this event. So these are all my Discord messages of me reaching out in the WESIS announcements, talking about the WESIS CTF. The poster in the bottom right, that's the one that was hung all around GCI um, and spreading the word. So we, as WESIS, had the opportunity to speak at the WIC general meeting to talk about our CTF and when it was happening, what it looks like, and then we were able to run demos. Um, we had one challenge where it was a missed challenge just for them to get familiar with the platform and how a CTF works. So... The most important part, like, yes, you have the participants, but without challenges, there is no CTF. So this is a little breakdown. Um, we were fortunate enough to get 33 challenges. Um, so we had three different batches where we dropped these challenges. And um, it says here that we had 94 people. Um, 94 people were active throughout the CTF, which is amazing. We had over 130 people in our Discord. And we had people competing from University of Tulsa. Um, which was really cool. So I think it went really successful, but Joe's going to talk more about the infrastructure side and technical stuff. Oh, oh yeah, we like we like servers, we like infrastructure, we like DOS. Um, so the challenge of a CTF is you got a lot of different challenges, some that need hosting, some that don't, and getting them all to work on the infrastructure you have. In this case, one Fox Mark server. Um, this server existed, it's in IH, um, what I did is I had the box marks on it, and the CTF, a CTFD, and all the other challenges were hosted in virtual machines, and each challenge was in a Docker container. Um, to reach the actual internet, we had Caddy working on the web challenges, and then a NAT, DHCP, and port forwarding for any phone challenges with a TCP socket. So what happened here is all the different domains every web challenge would go through to this IP, into Caddy and then through the NAT interface, it would now have a reverse proxy to the correct virtual machine. So, right here we have one machine with just the CTFD, um, and one for web challenges, one for phone, and then one challenge required a lot of ports. It was a networking challenge. They, it was more like a hack the box style challenge, so it needed a whole set of ports. So, I just made its own separate. VM and I gave it a public IP so it's able to be scanned separately from the actual 
on Poxmox Note. Um, and the some pictures of the network config, um, kind of going over the different things that are in place. So to set up UHDHCP, UDHCPD, um, we had static leases for every VM, so that way the reverse proxy IPs won't have to change. So what you do is in the etsy slash UDHCPD.com, you have the static lease record with the MAC address of the VM and then the IP. I like see up there what you gotta do to get network your box box. It's very helpful if you're doing like personal box box, you only have one public IP you have to use. You set up in the NAT table a, a fee value rule, which will allow you to well, post value for the NAT. Um, it allows you to mask all of your NAT IPs into your public IP by specifying the WAN interface. And then you see in fee routing, we have port forwarding. We port forwarded 5,000 to 5100 to 192.163.1.5, that being the phone box. So that way, if they went to the research, like public IP, and any of those ports, it would then go to the virtual machine internally. Um, then these two are just pictures of how Caddy works. We already used Caddy before, I highly recommend. Caddy is a reverse proxy, such as Nginx, but it's a lot sim simpler to set up, and it automatically handles your HTTPS service. So it uses Let's Encrypt, and when you provide it with a domain, it will obtain the cert for you and use it to proxy to the correct device. So right here we have all the web challenges. You can see each one is at the same IP, and I incremented the port by one for every challenge. Um, so this this domain went to that port, it went to that port. And for context, inside of the VM, there was a Docker Compose with all the challenges up. So that way, if we had to spin them all down, spin it back up to make things private, um, it was as simple as Docker Compose down, Docker Compose up. Now we get a little more like the administrator, not to get away things. So like, to get to the actual box box web interface, you're going to use it. Um, I had to have a local host proxy, but tell it not to check the OSS because box box um, HTTPS is double bind. Um, so we use the public site and then we use the CPF. So that was all what happened in the network side. Um, CTFD, um, CTFD is an open source CTF platform. Very popular, very helpful, ran in class. So if you need to like add stuff to it, which we'll get to later, it's very easy, it's in Python. It also have a Docker image, so you, basically, the way you set it up is you download the GitHub repo, you change some configs based on what you need, and you Docker compose up. And then it just works, and it's amazing. Um, as Rachel said, we had a dev instance of CTFD to do for demos. So that was like ctfd-demo, or uh, another domain. That's, uh, that's a fun sorry. domain. Um, so yeah, and then pwn document. This was something that I think Scales brought up to me, um, called pwn jail. Pwn jail is a very special document image, which allows you to host CTF challenges in a very isolated, very constrained setting to prevent the possibility of after they pwn the box to the flag, of them getting anywhere higher. So, as it says here, it creates a new container like jail for every incoming TCP connection. And it essentially revalues your standard in, standard out into a TCP socket. So, anytime the user types into a TCP socket through Netcat, it's as if they're doing standard in on like a C program. And you can set a whole bunch of constraints on CPU, memory, how many processes it can have open, disk usage, time requirements. And it was fairly simple to set up. What it does is when you build the image, you create the image of what the actual challenge is, and you copy the root of that image into slash serve of the pwn jail. So now every time that a user connects, pwn jail is going to create a new sub jail using that slash serve as the root. So it's almost like a container in a container, but a lot easier to set up. So again, looking at how a Docker file for this works, um, this was for pattern matching, I think the challenge was called, or pattern finder. So we had from Ubuntu, um, we copied in the flag and the binary as slash app slash run. Then we have to do is you do from pwnred jail, and you say copy from base, if you haven't done Docker before with multiple images, when you have two images, you can say as base to say 
This up here is base. Copy from the base image, not from your system. The slash directory, so everything, into slash stuff. And then you had to chamad plus x um, set back one to make it executable again. And then it would start running. Um, this was something that I had to make a few changes on, on Python based challenges for because some assumed it was going to be run by Python 3, etc. So what I had to do is I had to just add um, shebang, user bin Python 3, and that got it working. <laughs> Um, Discord bots. As I said, um, CTFD is very easy to change because it's written in Python. So one of the things that I came up with, which was um, idea initially thought to be public, but then we decided to make it onto the challenge office, was the solving bot. So every time someone solved, you would see this little message in the solve channel. Right here, you can see the great charity Fortnite um, solve witch talk. Man, man just fat. Um, so we had that. Um, so it helped us see like which challenges are being solved easier, which one we made some more hints on. And then this one, um, we had a data dog on the CTF box or the Fox box node to help monitor which VMs were seeing high usage. So we had to move resources around we could. Unfortunately, data dog does not have a Discord integration by default. They have Slack. Um, so what I did is I set up a little Go program that would take in the HTTP webhooks that you can get from Datadog, and then convert them into Discord uh, embeds. So this is just helpful for seeing if something was going wrong, I could solve it quickly. Um, conveniently, the only time that we had a warning was at three in the morning, and I was asleep. But it solved itself, so I don't know. We're going. <laughs> Overall takeaways for if you're ever gonna try and do instruction for CTF, Docker is actually your best friend uh, if you can make Docker images of every challenge, do it. It's just so easy. Compose up, compose down, works everywhere. We get those. Um, for the poem slash non-web challenges, you want to tell your authors to write their own Docker files. A big thing I saw was that some challenges, especially the C ones, did not work initially with PwnJail because PwnJail will only send the message over TCP to the client when the STD out is flushed. Um, it doesn't always happen unless you have new lines. So for example, if there's a user input that doesn't have a new line after it, it wouldn't print. And I had to add the S uh, STL STD out flush uh, myself, recompile their program, and then some one of the challenges they had to like uh, take it from C to assembly, then modify the assembly for the exploit to work, and then compile or assemble. It, that was a fun time. So have your authors test it themselves or even just make images themselves. Saves you the pain, saves you the time. Um, another thing I learned with a crypto challenge that you had to boot force is that by default, there's like a 20 second timeout. So make sure you set jail time to zero. Otherwise, you may have people complain that they can't solve it because it takes them out after 20 seconds. Um, consider a VPN if you need more multi-port challenges. Um, as I said, the networking challenge that needed a lot of ports. That was only one, so I didn't find a need to set up a whole VPN. But if you go to something like that, like okay, something similar to Hack the Box, you may want a VPN because you're not going to have enough public IPs to host every challenge publicly. Also, depending on how like easily exploitable it is, that's also not a good idea in case some random person finds your box and then tries to pop it. Uh, if you're going to do larger scale competitions, um, this was very small in the scope of a lot of CTFs out there. Kubernetes is probably going to help just because you can easily scale up and down different web applications, um, a lot of things you're hosting over Docker. Um, I don't know how you would do the multi port one. Um, let's take VPN into the Kubernetes, like into the workspace. And personally, that sounds wild, and I wish you the best of luck with that. But yeah. Um, that's all we had. Does anyone have any questions about infrastructure, administration, anything about the CTF? <clears throat> Mr. Anthony? From like a management side of things, how, how easily, or I guess, how do you abstract it enough so you're not getting stuck in the weeds of like, oh, I need to help with this specific box and kind of take your step back and say, people can handle their own things? Yeah, uh, good question. That's why I took Joe on. 
Um, I did not understand a lot of technical stuff, but I didn't really understand what was going on. And I talked to people prior previously and they were like, you need like certain teams for different things. Um, so I didn't want to make a whole bunch of different teams because it was the Wisa CCF, so it was smaller. But that's why I did take Joe and I was like, hey, Joe. And he was like, what's up? And I was like, can you help me with this? And he's like, sure. So he took that on and I'm really fortunate for that. I think all of Wisa's eboard is very fortunate for that. Um, so that's how I was able to differ everything up and still be able to look from a broader perspective. Yeah. Definitely, I think. Um, one challenge that people really had difficulty with, uh, I don't remember the name, but it was the port knocking one. It was the one from my coworker. Um, something that I realized was that there weren't a lot of hints. Um, and I was told that, hey, maybe we should put some more hints in. So, yeah, but there was a lot of challenges. The most solved challenge was the where is Anthony Lollipop one. Um, <laughs> that was the most solved challenge. That had, like, 27 solves. Um, but, yeah, there were a lot that were left unsolved, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed my challenges. I thought they were fun. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Is, it, is running everything in Docker, is there any kind of limitations that basically having challenge authors half the person in Docker to think in rotation that brings up? Um, I wouldn't say so. Um, the, the entire thing with the Docker is just as a security measure. Um, so it's mostly used, the Redpone jail specifically is for pwn challenges or anything that you just want to be super secure about and ones that involve a typical standard in, standard out procedure. Mm. So I think it's like printing an input in Python, you would want to use that code. Um, and also Docker is just something good that even if they don't know it, it's good for them to learn. So if they're doing a web challenge, we can make sure that if it works on their machine, it's gonna work on mine. Because if it's written in a Docker file, you know, that's the whole goal of Docker, that you don't have any, it works on my machine type situations. Any other questions? You have another question? Yeah. How did it go in a positive light? Like when you said, it good, everything went well, CPF, or did you have anything that was just super close to it? Um, from the info side, everything was very successful. Nothing went down, everything stayed up. No, it's CTF yeah. stayed up the entire time. Data Dog was so happy with me. It was great. <laughs> you have any management? Yeah, um, something that I could have improved on. Um, I didn't really give the challenge authors a, a template of how to do like a write up. Um, and I just kind of like expected that. That was something that I needed to work on. Um, but other than that, everyone was really. Uh, Commutative, if that makes sense. Um, if I had questions, they were easy to hop on Discord and be like, hey, what's up? And I made sure to make different uh, channels so that way they can ping the certain authors from those um, challenges. But yeah, that was the only hiccup that I had, was just trying to figure out what they did. I'm not a mind reader, but I tried my best. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Um, I thought it was great. Um, finding how to build info for CTF was definitely a cool challenge. Um, yeah, I was happy when Rachel uh, saw me in my apartment. And we wouldn't say apartment, by the way. She like, came to my room and was like, hey, um, you want to work on this? And I'm like, okay. Um, just because it was, I got to mess around with a whole bunch of new things, especially in like Foxbox and doing the whole net proxy situation. So for me, it was just a cool thing to get to learn and experiment from. Yeah. Um, I felt really honored that people put me in this position because this was an elected position and one of my um, responsibilities was running this piece of CTF. Mind you, I've never competed in a CTF before, so I was was really lost. I was like, oh, there's different uh, categories. Interesting. How do I choose which ones I want? Um, and it was definitely a learning curve for sure, but it, I was able to see in myself the leader that I know I am and I was able to prove that I can do it um, to myself. <laughs> Um, but it was such a great learning experience, and I would totally do it again uh, without hesitation if I had this man by my side. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you.